Alexa, welcome to Tales Tomorrow. My name is Maru, your storyteller for today, and with me we have some more RPG horror stories. I hope all of you had a wonderful Valentine's Day or a Wednesday. I know some people have like a really bad inclination when it comes to Valentine's Day, like Singles Awareness Day, and for some people it's a really nice happy time, for others it's a little bit of like a ooh, reminder that I'm forever alone. The succubus ladies will never appear for real. I'll always be a virgin tiefling. Canonically, Maru is actually a canonically still a virgin. Anyway, I hope you had yourself a wonderful Valentine's Day. Regardless, let's go ahead and cover some RPG horror stories that hopefully aren't dealing with Valentine's Day horror stories because, man, that'd be a disaster. Let's get some RPG horror stories for today. My ex-girlfriend tries to control me like she's still part of my life. A few months before we broke up, my ex told me about a mutual friend of ours whose DM was looking for a new player for a party. At first, I was a bit hesitant, since not only was it my first time playing D&D, but also because I heard a lot of stories about how romantic relationships can ruin a decent party, but I joined anyway. The part about relationships ruining decent party, that could be a little bit of hit and miss. It really depends on the person. Some people are just really prone to like big explosive arguments and things just kind of go tits up, but then I also seen some other couples that can stay pretty amicable because they're just... They're too old to deal with the nonsense, they just, they just want to play some D&D. But that ultimately depends on the kind of people you're dealing with. Aside from me, my ex, and the DM, there are three other party members. Warforge, who was a mutual friend from before. Tiefling, who I knew of but never spoke to before the campaign. And lastly, Switch, who was new to me and went through two characters before any of us died. We're all in college and met up in dorm for our campaign and met once a week on Saturday. The first couple of meetings were fine, but I noticed that my ex would often go on tangents when talking to the DM. That was just normally something that she did, but it would often sort of put her in a position of leadership since she would be doing a lot of planning. The rest of us would always agree and only occasionally try to add to it. I was never really upset about it since the plan would usually work, but sometimes it would become boring while she planned for a long time. At some point, she stopped doing the meetings one after another for multiple reasons, like family stuff illness and just having stuff to do. And the first time it happened, I kind of enjoyed it, since she wasn't there to take over the planning or interrupt other players with her ideas on their turns. Even at the peak of our relationship, I could still say that I enjoyed the campaign when she wasn't there, since a fellow cow group of introverts had to do our own thing and make our turns without anyone trying to add their two cents. In a room full of introverts, if you have the one extrovert that's trying to be like the team leader because nobody's speaking up, yeah, it could definitely become like a weird dynamic because you have people that are more passive and you have the one person that is active and the people that are passive, they don't really mind the active person, but at the same time, it sort of kind of changes the dynamic of the room where the active person dominates the entire social space. If you don't mind that sort of dynamic, that's fine. But if you find that as a problem, you should definitely try to speak up, especially if you're the introvert party. D&D is a kind of game that requires everybody to cooperate together and in cooperation you need communication. If you don't have communication you don't have much of cooperation and then you just have this one person taking the active role while everybody else taking the passive role and nobody really discussed the idea or the dynamic and it just sort of kind of just became that. If there are any sort of issues or concerns it is always better to speak up than not speaking up because if you don't speak up then how are you supposed to address the problem in the first place? Then Christmas break happened which is when our relationship ends Ended due to complicated and confusing relationship reasons. But after a while, I started realizing that it was just because she got back with her old ex that she broke up with because of moving reasons. I didn't let her ruin the campaign, so I just didn't act like anything was different. It was probably a good idea since she finally started rejoining the campaign. Now, before she left, we were just fighting bandits that overrun a town we went to. But ever since then, we had been preparing to fight the bandit lord of the region and just left one of the strongholds after some investigation and combat. We were planning to go back once we had a concrete strategy. When my ex came back though, she went back to her old ways of long-winded planning with the DM instead of looking for a mutual decision made by all of us, and it even made me feel confused and like I was just doing grunt work for a plan I didn't create. You would think in a team-based game that she would want to discuss the plan with the players as well to make sure that everybody is on board before confining stuff to the DM. But maybe something's going on in the background, I don't know. Maybe we're missing some context, maybe something else is going on from her perspective, who knows, I don't know. But she's making decisions for the party and everybody else is not speaking up, that is definitely a problem. Flash forward to after the defeat of the town bandit lord and an entertaining chariot race between me, tiefling and few NPCs. We'll move on to the next town. All of us decided to go shopping since this town had more magical items, so we went to the general store. My ex and I would later go to the camp and craft store since I needed a healing potion material and she needed alchemy materials. 
While in the general store, I realized that I hadn't used my Warlock High Charisma stat as often as I should, so I persuaded the shopkeeper to knock down the price of a magic ring I wanted, and got 17, with a bonus of 4, becoming 21. The shopkeeper gave me the ring for a trade, for a potion of Hill Giant Strength, probably what it was called, and we transitioned to the craft store after the rest went back to the blacksmith. While in the craft store, my ex decided to change her mind and wanted to buy the potion materials with me. I asked the clerk how much she had, but in the confusion of what was about to happen, I forgot to mention I wasn't planning on buying that same amount. The clerk stated that the fee was 140 gold. Since both my ex and I were buying it, and I decided to test my luck again and persuade the clerk to lower the price again, but this time I committed the apparent sin of trying to flirt with her a bit. Now, I have barely any charisma in real life, and I know the performance I used was very cringe the moment it came out of my mouth, but I don't think I should have been punished for it. I know that it was the DM who decides how the outcome of the roll impacts the game, so me rolling a 16 with additional 4 didn't always have to be 100% positive, but when the put outcome screwed me up as much as it did, you would think it was an 11 I rolled. It was fine with the clerk only bumping the prize down to 130 gold, but when my ex told me to use all 92 of my gold due to my cringe flirting, I was surprised. I had just gotten 75 of that gold from the chariot race from earlier, and she did have more money than me, but let it happen because of the confusion and me not being confrontational. Once the meeting ended, I apologized to everyone for flirting, but the next day I saw my ex with her old one as they were both together again, and it hit me. She wasn't part of my life anymore. I'm ashamed to say, but in our relationship, I was occasionally submissive and let her take the lead on things. She was normally a smart and independent person, which usually led to her being in charge of things, but now I slowly realized that she had no power over me, and I should have stood up for myself. What should I do to get my money back and make sure nothing like this happens again without ruining the campaign? There's nothing wrong with admitting that you're submissive and breedable. Wait, what? I don't know why she made you spend your gold, like 92 gold for like majority of the thing. If you didn't really need the alchemical stuff, but y'all decide to go basically 50-50 and you're still paying more because of the flirting attempt, that's kind of strange, but I suppose it depends on the dynamic and if you're okay with that sort of thing. If you're not okay with having to spend your gold or share your gold with a party member, even if it is your ex or not, you still should try to draw a fair line that if you're paying halvesies, it has to be halvesies no matter what. The only one way to get you to not spend more gold on the money ahead of time or in future endeavors and future deals is by straight up saying, no, I'm not gonna spend more gold. We agreed on the original deal and that's honestly what I can put up. Speak up, join the conversation, make yourself heard. Sometimes just speaking up is like the best thing that you can do. I get introverts are introverted and stuff, but if you don't speak up, nobody's gonna know there's a problem going on in the first place. Talk to your DM, talk to the other players, talk at the table. You're among people that want to play D&D and stuff. So please, for your own sake, as difficult as it may be, try to speak up and join the conversation. Sometimes friends can't game together. I've been part of a gaming group for about six or seven years, where four of us still part of the main group, while three or four others have come and gone or come and stayed for this year's long campaign. The three of the four core players have been friends for a long time, and the fourth is a player's partner. The problem player is a great person out of game. One on one, they're sweet and often charming. But once they're around more than one person, they have to be the funniest, the nerdiest, the most pop cultured. They'll crack jokes taking the shotgun approach, trying to wax hilarious at every turn out of character. And when nobody wants to engage because we're all in character, prop player gets butthurt and pounced. And then repeats what they've just said two or three or four times before getting all huffy and announcing, Nobody got that? Really? Yep, you know, weird enough, I can relate to that. I've been in Discord calls with somebody just regurgitating memes over and over and over and over and over again. People that try to be funny usually come out to be very unfunny and sometimes can be a little bit irritating to be around. The most funniest people are the ones that aren't trying to be funny, they're just themselves. They just have this natural personality where they'd be funny or they can say some silly stuff or funny stuff and they can read the room and anyway, I understand the situation you're in. Somebody's trying a little bit too hard to try to be funny when they're not funny in the slightest. When it comes to their turn, problem player is never ready, takes forever to look up their character sheet, and because they haven't been listening to the GM, has to ask what's going on every time. They talk out of character constantly, and don't stop even when someone says, I'm trying to listen to the GM. Problem player just turns to the next person to continue the chatter. Oh my god, I'm just getting irritated reading this. Why don't you ask the person to leave by now? Why don't you ask the DM to ask the person to leave? Where's the DM in this situation? Please tell me the DM speaks up and asks the person to leave or shut up at least a little bit. For the longest time, we've been able to ignore it or let it go. 
because we're all too old for this crap in our 30s. No, don't let it go. Don't ignore it. Speak up. The best approach is to say something. The best approach is to speak up about it. Talk to your DM. Talk to the player and tell him, hey, my man, buddy, you're talking too much. I can't hear the GM. I can't hear what's going on. You're so distracted. If you're so distracted, why are you playing? Go do something else. Clearly, you're not interested in this thing. You're just here for the social factor or something. I don't know. You could probably find a nicer way to say it. If you guys are sick and tired of it, then draw the line in the sand. Tell the guy, either you sit here quietly when the GM is speaking because I'm trying to listen to them, or just leave. Simple as that. There's just two options. It's fun to talk out of character. It's fun to crack jokes. It tr it's fun to even try to be funny. But if the GM is talking and other people are listening, maybe the guy should also listen too then they wouldn't be asking questions about like what's going on what's happening who am i who am i but then problem players started lashing out at me out of character at the table nothing major but annoying af they'd laugh when my character got hit with big damage but what pat when no character got hit at all or they'd talk over me or accuse me of being antagonistic when i would ask them to explain something don't even get me started on how weird they are at the gm's discord it's like they feel comfortable enough being friends out of game to dump on me in game. Okay, friends don't just dump on each other in game or whatever. Like, I get a little bit of riffing, right? Me and Micah, we constantly riff at each other. And sometimes we'll just start fake arguments because they're just funny. But if somebody's just ripping on you for the sake of ripping on you just because they feel like they're comfortable enough to do that without any sort of prompting or you're not used to that sort of thing, then don't be friends with that person. It doesn't sound like a friend. It's not like a friend in the slightest. Little jabs here and there are fine and all, but it just dumping on somebody over and over again and trying to make some sort of a problem every single interaction. That's not friend. And you should probably tell him that he is being a jerk when he's doing this sort of thing. It got so bad, I began to dread our games and eventually interacted with their characters as little as possible. Turns out most of the other players were in the same boat. The last straw was when problem players screamed at me out of character for something that happened to their character, entirely unrelated to anything thing I'd done. Their character got hit during combat for like 10 points of damage, while mine had been knocked unconscious and had been healed 2 or 3 times. Problem player whinged about it and GM pointed out I've taken 4 times the damage problem player had, kind of ribbing the problem player for pouting about being hit. Problem player then proceeded to yell at me for always being superior. The GM had talked to the problem player about all this and it come up in our conversation as well. So it's not like we haven't tried to make things work. 10 points of damage, you should sue the entire party. How dare they damage you for 10 points when everybody else is like bleeding out and like dead or rolling death saves unconscious and stuff. How dare you take 10 points of damage to your precious character? Maybe problem player is insecure or immature or both. And a gaming setting brings the worst out of them. Even though they say they really like gaming, it doesn't seem like they do. Or at least they don't like the TTRPGs and not Assassin's Creed or Final Fantasy. But between that and the GM getting so fed up with them being disengaged, the three of us had considered starting another game without the problem player. GM still wants to finish the ongoing campaign. It's weird because I still consider problem player a friend, but will never be able to game with them again. I don't know what it is, but something about gaming, TTRPGs or video games or otherwise, it just brings out the worst out of some people. Some people, not all. Like sometimes you just meet somebody that's like perfectly fine out of games, but as soon as you put them in a TTRPG game or a video game, they just become annoying or toxic or both. They're just really hard to have at the table because all fun just gets lost because they, they just have this problem behavior. I say continue the campaign, but ask the problem player to leave. You guys gotta tell him that he's exuding problem play behavior behavior, that he's being a problem, that he's doing this as a problem, that a problem. Make a whole list of all the problem play behavior they have so the player understands what they're doing is kind of unwelcome at the table. It just goes to show, sometimes when you want to play with somebody, you just throw toxic traits come out in a TTRPG game. I don't know why TTRPG specifically. Some people can be just fine and be very nice and courteous and very chill people, but as soon as you put them in games, they just exude all kinds of problem play behavior. And it's not okay. You gotta make sure that you don't have people like that. It's still fine to be friends with them out of game. Just, just don't play games with them. Simple as that. And with that, that's gonna be all our stories for today. I wanna thank you very much for watching and thanks so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG horror stories ever goes down or if you wanna submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales tomorrow. Bye-bye.